But I think it's interesting, too, the thing about where politics has taken over culture, because at a certain point, all of the creators and the artists started saying that you had to be activist in your art, and they were all leftist. So everything you saw on TV started being like, you know, far left political bias messaging on purpose. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And Aren't it you makes tired? bad art. It makes really crappy viewing. I have no TV. I barely partake in anything in society more. It's not fun. Nothing's fun. There's always the message yeah. and everything you're watching. And you're like, are you serious? Like, ugh, I don't know, I've injecting been, girl it, power. It, admittedly this. buried in video games <laughs> for the for last, you. like, uh, maybe. But I cannot take What are you playing? I've been playing Warcraft every day all Cog day. Mind. Okay. Warcraft, uh... Like World of Warcraft or yes, Warcraft Three, sir. yeah. That's... The ultimate escapism. I, it's like because I cannot watch m- movies are stupid. I can't take dumb <laughs> acting. I can't take <laughs> politics. There's this like political. Like it's not that I don't like p- politics in general. I don't like partisan crap where I'm getting fed a narrative to to push some agenda. I can't. It doesn't interest me. It doesn't entertain me. So I'm but, buried in in like escapism. It's but this is this, this is what happens. You, you're right. You know, at some point, the activists were like, everything is political, so everything needs to be. Mm-hmm. And it was the left doing that. Mm-hmm. And this is a, this was combined with the, the advent of these microblogs that focus specifically on one issue. So if you were a gaming website, this, this is why I think Gamergate was like mm-hmm. the first big culture war battle. If you're a gaming website, how often can you really write an article? A uh, new video game comes out. So you do all the walkthroughs. You give all your thoughts on the new game designs. You do a couple reviews. Now what? You gotta wait Streamers. for another people. Yeah, they now, should be doing gameplay now, footage. They say, ah, b- 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 the game's racist. Oh, uh, the video game's racist. Let's talk oh. about that. Oh. Bill Gates bought Warcraft, and I had to sign a social contract, like some woke thing to play. What? Wow. Yeah, they're like, you can't tell people their naughty names when they're not doing what they're supposed to do in a raid. And I'm like, what? Like, I can't be... Like on, I guess it's Discord now. I'm so old. I almost said Ventrilo. And be like, <laughs> dude, speak. yeah. I'm like, what? You can't yell at people and call them names? I'm like, that's like what World of Warcraft is all about. <laughs> they they ruined it. But so what happens is the, the, the response to these, these woke lunatics was the anti-woke people challenging it, but they were reactive. These are the people trying to escape Ian. And the reason why the culture war started is because people who were just like, dude, I don't want politics. I'm just trying to get away from work and the, and the news. I just want to fight some goblins. And all of a sudden the goblins are telling me I'm being racist for fighting the goblins. Why is this happening? And then they found out that there were certain prominent feminists who were going to video game companies and telling them you had to do this. And then this whole thing has just snowballed and it's continued to the point where now we have ESG. I saw a video. I'll see if I can pull it up and, and explain it later. But this guy was saying that if you if you affect the children and you make them you sexually compromise children, that they lose their will, and then it, as adults they're unable to combat anything. Well, they have no to, boundaries, yeah, well, so you can introduce almost anything to an abused child. Like that's why everyone's anti grooming right, right now, and that happens though. I mean. You, it's interesting, some of the early Drag Queen Story Hour videos that I saw of like, you know, parents bringing their kids, the kids would, there were a couple of videos where I saw the kids would like be pushed toward the drag queen, which is basically like a man in garish makeup and a dress and a beard. It's sort of like confusing for a kid. The kid would be pushed towards it, the person, and then, you know, would try and turn away and the parents would push the kid back. You know, like it's like Santa. break down your did you break down your bar- barrier. You see the video of the old man in tidy whities twerking to the little girl. That, and that was then really the disturbing. woman walks up and waves to him and tells the little girl. And the little girl waves to him. Yeah, in it looks like he pooped in them too. Like Ew. he was oh. such a wreck. I, I want to. Uh, I want so I want that clip. I want to try and get. Um, I'm gonna. I want to pitch it out to all the big uh, uh, advertising billboards. And I was like, hey, would you guys be, be okay putting like a pride event video clip up? And they say, yes, but like, here's the clip. The problem is I don't own it. Mm. And so Damn. apparently the person who owns it is very pro what they filmed. Uh, so we need video footage of that that's not, that like <sighs> we could buy or license or claim or something. The video is by this guy named Jocko Bullions. It's the first time I ever saw him as a PragerU video on Instagram. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The original video, mm. the original video the tw- was, the- was someone at Pride celebrating Pride. Oh, I'm sorry. I was referencing the guy talking about sexually compromising children. Oh, oh Destroying oh, sorry, their sorry. will yeah, live yeah. Yeah. and willingness awesome. to fight yeah. and willingness to support the free speech, willingness to be even interested. They're just incapable of of understanding the rights of others when, you, when you're broken mentally. I mean, especially sexually broken. I didn't, it didn't happen to me. So I don't, 
personally see it, but I see it in others where it happened to them. And it's very difficult to to continue and to like know what your boundaries are. I yeah, I mean, I have friends where this this is their background, and they have an extremely difficult time with relationships, with understanding what it's okay to do to them right. or not. You know, I'll just throw out it's there: it's very disturbing, and it's hard for them to to go through life with that. I've had over twenty years of therapy. I was molested when I was a kid, and I married a guy that was over twenty five years older than me. It has a profound effect on kids and. He happened to be the same age as the dude that, you know, so th- it does stuff to you, dude. And of course, when you're young, you're like, no, it didn't. I'm fine. And then you're sitting on the couch like, I'm not OK. <laughs> oh, no, I'm totally OK now. That's, that's, like, no, I don't yeah. want that to happen to people, you know. Yeah, but it does. Yep. And then everyone celebrates it on Twitter. Look at this. Look well, at what they're doing yep. to these kids. This is great. Yeah. It's acceptance. Well, I think what we're seeing with the Internet and with the start of the culture war is it's like a sorting algorithm. The people of, of weak mental fortitude, of weak will, are just shuffling along whichever direction and they're being shuffled off the cliff. Yeah. And then the people of strong of strong will and mental fortitude are resistant and saying no. And that's probably why it's apolitical, why there are liberal people who are now hanging out with conservatives and voting for Donald Trump. And being like, called French. And being called sure. French. Yeah. 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 Even That's the world I want. Even though it's like I most want. people agree with these, these opinions. But if you're in the cult and you're of weak will, then you're going to see someone on the TV say mean things. Just say, that's a fact, period, no matter what. You know, it's been my experience. Like, I have friends, family that voted for Biden, and I never say a word to them. I don't like reprimand them or tell them they're stupid or but the second someone finds out i voted for trump here it comes and i'm like well biden's just as horrible like to me and i'm not like being a butthole to you what like what is wrong with humanity anymore where they can't just be cool with each other if uh, uh, look there are some sane people on the left but it's the it's the exception not the rule and that's because, uh, uh, so I was, I was actually uh, talking with some other prominent uh, uh, personality this morning about strategy and stuff, and, and they were asking me about, you know, left and right. And I said, look, man, we talk about this on the show. Uh, the right, if you look on blind spotter, typically are people who have balanced views. The left is echo chamber biased cult. They claim the right is the cult. But then you look at Ben Shapiro and it's like left and right wing, you know, on his blind spot or whatever. He consumes news from all sources. He is not in an echo chamber. He is not blind to the facts. Like you were mentioning, you listen to NPR and do mm-hmm. all these things. These journalists at NBC, exclusively left wing sources, not a single right wing source. And then they post insane things on Twitter, totally devoid of facts. And they believe Jussie Smollett. Right. Dude. You know, I got flamed on when that story first came out. We're both from... Chicago land. I read that story and I'm like, no one goes and walks outside in that weather. No way. The gangbangers are inside smoking. <laughs> there, and it was by it was by NBC and the clock. Never. There's like no humans there. Never. Like even when you're drunk, you're not like, bro, oh, negative forty polar Let's vortex. Go Let's go to Subway. <laughs> Said no one in Chi Town. Let alone this is MAGA country. That is not MAGA <laughs> country. I, and then I said it, and everyone's like. You're you're racist. I'm like, what? How am I racist? Like, I I from there I know this, and Clowns. then it came out. I'm like, not a single person said they were sorry. Of course not. But man, did I get exactly. executed for they, that one? <laughs> all of these stories. And this is what I like to bring up. You know, we, we can go through the list of every story that was fake. They believe it every single time. Well, and then they then they claim to be arbiters of misinformation, disinformation, and truth, yep. while they're the ones who have been pushing That's this stuff out there. Like there was a, a whole political story, a Politico ran a story, and then everybody else picked it up, saying that Clarence Thomas made these um, claims about COVID, COVID vaccines. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he didn't. Oh, yeah. He's, he, he didn't at all. In his dissent of not taking this case, I think he wanted to take the case. I might be wrong about that. But he was talking about how what the people who were bringing the suit said. He He said what they said. He was quoting them. And everyone was like, Clarence Thomas is making fake news, you know, fake uh, assumptions about At at first they said Clarence Thomas posts false claim X. Then when they realized that it was him quoting the the, the plaintiffs, I believe, Mm -hmm. they then change it to Clarence Thomas pushes claim Mm -hmm. of X. And it's like, uh, he had to cite their claim in his dissent. Right. Like, could he have just not put what they were arguing? He needed to, right. ar- like, 
it's just it's, this it's happened, fake. Uh, this happened all through universities in the past few years as well. Like a professor would use a word in order to discuss the word. Uh, usually it would be like the N-word, for example. A professor would use say the word in order to discuss the word and then would have a whole bunch of backlash because they were it was believed that they had used the word. But you have to be able to say a word in order to discuss it. Although... As regards the the pride footage you were talking about, we actually had a ton of that footage that was taken by um, Beth Beish in Toronto and oh, okay. also in um, Katie Davis Court in Seattle. That, we have a ton of stuff. That video, specifically the one of the old man twerking in front of a little girl. Is, it was so gross. We have like all these naked people doing stuff but, in front of kids. Oh, in front of kids. Oh. In Toronto and so Seattle. The issue, yeah. the issue with that one is... You get a naked person and you go to an advertiser, they'll say, look, it doesn't matter. Nudity is not allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, but I got his underwear. Bikini models are allowed. Absolutely. So what, what this, this video is particularly interesting that shows this old man twerking in front of a little girl because one, it's in public. So it is not considered to be out of the bounds of what is publicly acceptable. The man is fully clothed. He's wearing tidy whities You can't tell me that he's doing anything illegal or if they say that's not allowed, I'll be like, why? You have women in bikinis, you have men in Speedos, but this guy's not allowed because they know it would be bad, bad, bad if they actually did it. Imagine Times Square on The Beast, mm -hmm. a 70 foot screen, the biggest, you just have that video. Everybody would, would, would vote Republican in two seconds if they watched that. What news, happened like, to Democrat our society? Supporters. Like 10 years ago, if some old dude twerked in front of your kid, that dude would not be alive. Like that would not be acceptable for people to like parade and twerk and shimmy in front of kids. And now everyone's like, bring the kids on down for right? the shimmy fest. Well, and that came out, that was in the, the Washington Post a couple years yeah. ago, ran an article about why kink is good to expose kids it's to. It's disgusting. But and this then is, this in, is, look, yeah. we're seeing hi geographic hyperpolarization. People in the cities who oppose that stuff are leaving the cities and the people who like it or are weak-willed are just sitting there saying like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. So we're watching these videos and going, how could this be happening? It's because everybody of sound mind is leaving these areas. They're going to Texas and they're going to Florida in droves. We're well, watching. for good reason. And the outer it's suburbs. Nice there. Yeah. And we went to West Virginia. Mm -hmm. All my gay friends are like, we don't do the don't pride to anything. Yeah. Like they're like, we used to on the weekend, like 10 years ago. Hey, we had a little weekend. They're like, it has just turned into debauchery. And, you know, like I can be gay without a community of people like, good job. I'm like, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, man, these this, this, poor babies. This is why I say stuff like uh, like Civil War, because people don't understand the world views are so incredibly divergent that you, you, you people like people can't live together anymore. So from what I've seen in my own eyes, the, the, I went to Northern Ireland, I went to Belfast. I didn't see the troubles. I was too young. But you look at, I mentioned often the peace wall that separated, you know, the, the groups that were fighting to try and stop the violence. On one side, there's a monument painting celebrating people who murdered a bunch of other people who are like at a restaurant. Like some people are chilling at a restaurant, some dudes show up and just gun them down. And the other side's like, yeah, you did it. That's deep tribalism. When one side of the wall says we are the true sons of Israel and the other side says we stand with Palestine, I'm like, what does that have to do with the like UK, the Irish Republic, Protestantism, you know, Catholicism Cleveland or whatever. Browns. It is just, just an Oilers. tribal. So when you have people, they don't care what the truth is. They care that their enemies burn. And when you're in a cult, this is why I think that the biggest threat is the establishment left and many leftists. They don't care for the truth. They don't seek out the truth. They believe lies. They don't care that they believe lies. They just want pain for their also enemies. organized religion, man. It's all this is they're trying to organize a religion around this stuff. And any time you're willing to believe something without proof is insanity. It's dangerous. And if you become zealous in your beliefs, then you become a danger. You know what? I'll give you this. The Vatican is corrupt beyond anything in the world. I was born and raised Catholic. I do believe in God. But you do hit some points with organized religion. Corrupt people take over anything they can where they can manipulate the sheep, take all their money and buy themselves helicopters. I think the Vatican's been doing that for a really long time. Now it's um, Davos group affiliated individuals mm -hmm. that the, the mentality of these people is that uh, I, I will tell you this. I have wined and dined with some of these people. I've been on rooftop parties and their attitude is, look, someone's got to work at McDonald's. And that doesn't mean that some people, you know, they're just not smart enough. No, no, no. What they're saying is we don't care if you're smart. We don't care if you're stupid. We need someone to make our burgers. So whether you're right for it or not, we will make it you. 
keeping people down, putting themselves in positions of power, because these are people who don't care about meritocracy, as exemplified by everything in the culture war. It's about protecting themselves and their core group and their assets, regardless of what is beneficial to humanity, regardless of what is true. Last night, I was thinking about drone delivery and like, okay, biggest problem with government. What if there was a revolution? We had to reform a new government. Then we'd have to be, if we were the ones in charge, we'd have to figure out where the resources are going and make sure everyone has enough. And all of a sudden you realize we don't have enough resources. We don't have the- Drone delivery, like the, the, you will own nothing and be happy and you'll get everything through drones? Like if you order something (laughs) from amazon.com or a website and you live in like sub-Saharan Africa, a drone will get thrown through the stratosphere and orbitally drop off your goods and then go back Imagine those going to red state. People would be blowing them out of the sky. Well, they do. I mean, yeah. they, they do get shot. They do get shot. So that gives me <laughs> it gives me a little down. bit of a it's glimmer a of hope. FAA violation. It's like an FAA crime. Or maybe what is, shooting, shooting them shooting down. Drones. Yeah, yeah, they're aircraft. Maybe we could organize society. Maybe it could be fixed or, or or resolved. But then the other part of me is just like, dude, it just feels like we're on an avalanche headed towards World Economic Forum takeover, where we're all like. Or not all of us, but the useless class, which is what Yuval Noah Harari calls these people that are just sitting around playing video games, collecting unemployment. Whatever. Hey, no. I'm yeah, I've, I've been there. I know, I understand it. I was part of that. Um, that they just are going to sit in the metaverse on psychedelics that are pharmaceutically administered, be getting government support, and and maybe they're harvesting their body. Heat. No, not having kids. Of so course, the they'll idea, just be there until they're this dead. This is, uh, are you, have you ever played Fallout 1? Or they'll use their, their no, reproductive organs, Fallout. they might, surrogacy and stuff like so that. So have you played Fallout 1? Yes. I so uh, there's the, the big game that was like groundbreaking was Fallout 3, and it's a, it's a Fallout series is about a post-apocalyptic, post-nuclear war. And uh, um, I think it's part one. Spoiler alert for the 30 or whatever year old game, uh, or older. It's like a Doom spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, right. So the, the main villain is this, uh, there was a thing called the forced evolutionary virus, that the idea was if nuclear war happened, they would give people this virus to genetically modify them so they could survive nuclear war. It turned them into super mutants who were androgynous and unable to have children. So uh, you come out of the vault and then like some humans survived and the main villain at the end says, your genetics can't be allowed to continue, but I won't kill you. If, you, if, you, if, if you'd like, I can sterilize you and let you, let you live your life. And that's like one of the endings. So what I think we may be seeing, you know, look, you can't, you can't look at someone like Bill Gates, who goes on, a, a, on stage at like a TED event and says, we need to reduce population and think, He's not trying to reduce population. He is. Yeah, he is trying to. We need to to reduce population. Now, trust me to feed you and give you drugs. Yes, Bill Gates. But outside (laughs) of like people being concerned about drugs or whatever, do you, so when he, what he was talking about is like, if we improve, improve technology, improve healthcare, we're going to see people have less and less kids because technological advance, advancements correlate with people having smaller and smaller families. I'm not going to get into the crazier conspiracies about what he may be doing with farmlands or anything like that, because he's buying a lot of farmland. But I'll just say this. Do you think he doesn't consider uh, um, sex ed and like uh, safe se- like pro- prophylactics and stuff as part of that campaign? Of course he does. Of course he's thinking like, how can I get people to not have they kids? They did that in Africa, the Gates Foundation. So, of, right. Of, right. And, yeah. and, and so uh, obviously a lot of people are like, well, well, that's okay, right? Okay. What about when you get in the territory of supporting organizations that advocate for, say, like sterilizing children? Saying like you should give them puberty blockers, which do, has a high chance of, or a decent chance of, you know, uh, inhibiting their ability to reproduce once they get older. Or their desire. And they well. lie the to these families and kids and say, yeah. oh, it's reversible. Totally reversible. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.